after Newton's three laws of motion, we also study the work, energy, and momentum. Work done by a force equals to force times displacement times cosine the angle between force and the displacement. To find the work done by a torque, we can use a similar equation. This work equals to torque times the angular displacement times cosine the angle between the angular displacement and the delta theta. In this course, we usually just deal with the torque and rotation that are either clockwise or counterclockwise. So if those two are both clockwise or both counterclockwise, they're in the same direction, we would have cosine zero degrees. If those two are one clockwise, one counterclockwise, opposite directions, then we would have cosine 180. We also learned that power is work over time. So if we divide the work by time, here you have displacement divided by time, which gives us a velocity. So power is also force times velocity times cosine the angle between the force and the velocity. For rotation, power is also work over time, which is uh, torque times the angular velocity times cosine the angle between the torque and the angular velocity. For power problems, usually this cosine part is uh, cosine zero degrees, which is one. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So the rotational version is uh, kinetic energy is uh, one half. What's the rotational counterpart for the mass? It is the rotational inertia or moment of inertia I and then times uh, omega squared. Now this is called the translational kinetic energy. And this one is called the rotational kinetic energy. Work and energy, they are same kind of things. Whether it is for translational motion or rotational motion, if it's work or energy, they are in joules. And the power is related to work and energy. So after you divide it by time, both of these are in joules per second. So they are both in watts. And then we talked about momentum. Momentum is m times v, mass times velocity. And we have this thing called angular momentum, which we use capital L for it. Instead of mass, we have I. Instead of velocity, we have angular velocity. And we know that the momentum is conserved if the net force on the system or the object is zero. The momentum of an object is conserved if the net force on the object is zero. The momentum of a system is conserved if the net force on the system is zero. So angular momentum is conserved if the net torque is zero. And we also learned about impulse. Impulse, by definition, is uh, the average force times time. And if we're looking at the impulse by the net force, then the impulse also equals to changing momentum. Angular impulse is the average torque times time. And if we're looking at the net torque, then the angular impulse produced by the net torque would equal to the change in angular momentum. We will go into detail in later lessons.